All right, welcome back to the Hillbilly Repairman. Um, today we're going to work on my uh, tractor. I have an 850 tractor that's had some uh, issues with the ignition, so we're going to rebuild the distributor. So uh, let's go do that. All right, so a few months ago I was uh, working at my property and um, the tractor. I'd, I jumped off and I had let it idle there for, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And, uh, and then I asked my son to go get it and he jumped on it. And as soon as he gave it some gas, it kind of quit and we hadn't been able to get it started since. Um, it's, it's probably been more than a few months actually. It's, it's been a while. And I just haven't had time to mess with it. Um, it had done that to me once before. It quit working uh, just out of the blue, you know, just driving it and it just kind of shuts off. And um, so I rebuilt the carburetor the first time because I, I thought that might be the problem. And, um, and that didn't help. And then it just started running again, um, just out of the blue. I don't know why. Um, I was messing with it, messing with it, and then it just started up and it ran for a couple months. And then, uh, and then it did it again when, uh, when we were up there working. So I'm not 100% sure why it's doing that. Um, I'm suspect that it's either the coil or the condenser or something in the distributor. So um, I actually have a spare distributor here. Uh, that I'm going to take apart and um, the last time when I worked on that distributor when I put that tractor when I kind of restored it I bought all the parts from tractor supply um, and maybe they're a little maybe they work but they're just not great maybe when they get hot I don't really know but um, I got to figure it out because it's super frustrating when you're trying to work and then the thing shuts off and then it basically where it stops is where it stays because it's really too big to push or pull around. So, um, so I got to figure it out. And so what I did is I went down to Napa and I bought the best replacement set of points, condenser, a new coil and a rotor and a cap. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those parts off. I'm going to clean this distributor up. This is a, not the one that came out of the tractor, that one's actually still in it, um, but it's far away, so I, I had a spare here, and I just decided I'm gonna rebuild this one and then go up there and just swap them out. So that's what I'm gonna do. So basically this is the uh, distributor, uh, mine is an 851, but I believe the distributor is the same for like the 600 series, the 800 series, and maybe even some of the 2000 series, I'm not quite sure, but, um, the basic idea of how it works is all is the same for all cars so so uh it should probably i don't know i guess this tutorial video should probably work for all of them so basically i'm going to take the rotor off and this little dust cover and uh and this one actually i had rebuilt this one before this came off a tractor that was running um but it had a, a spun rod bearing and so I ended up just parting that tractor out. Um, it had other few few issues. And so um, I kept the distributor just because I knew I might have some trouble. And so this is the distributor off that one. Um, and so I'm just gonna put this one together, clean it up and put it back together and then swap it out. And, and hopefully this will be my problem. So um, let's do that. And, and of course, I uh, didn't bring a flat screwdriver over here, a standard, so I got to go grab one. So uh, let me go get that and then we'll take it apart. Okay, I got my uh, flat screwdriver, so let's just get the uh, condenser off of here. And this is also one that came from uh, Tractor Supply. I'm not saying their stuff is bad, honestly. I just don't know and I, I'm just fed up trying to work on it. All right, so basically I uh, 
took the, the screw out of here and removed the condenser and then the condenser comes over here and hooks on the points. So uh, this was a 3 8 bolt. I took that or nut. I took that out. Just bend that tab back and then the points come out. And then I want to take this, this plate off here. It's real dirty underneath so I want to clean this up kind of good before I put it in the tractor. I want to try to avoid having the breakdowns in the future. So I'm just going to lift that plate out of there. And then uh, this little mechanism here, this is just kind of an advance, centrifugal advance. Um, as it spins faster, they kind of move out. Uh, all right, so I think I'm going to take this little post off of here too. So I let all the parts soak overnight in some uh, carburetor cleaner. Uh, Berryman Kim Dip. Um, it's the California version, so uh, if you're not in California, yours probably work better, but it did a pretty good job. Uh, everything's pretty clean and free, and uh, the only thing you got to make sure is that uh, when you put it back together, you make sure you lube, put some oil down in this, this little cap here. Um, otherwise, it'll, it'll be just metal to metal. It won't last very long, so make sure that you do that. Um, so basically, I'm just going to reassemble it uh, and and just the exact opposite of the way that I put it together or took it apart. So let's do that. I think this will probably be better going first. So you got to make sure on this little uh, connect contactor that you isolate it from from the housing. If you don't have this little block here, this little piece of fiber, let me see if I can get a little closer. There's a little piece of fiber here. If you don't have that, and you don't have this Bakelite uh, piece, it'll just ground out and you won't, you won't ever get the tractor to start or whatever you're working on. So make sure that's isolated. The points, the points have a little pin on them here, and there's a little hole here in the plate in the distributor. So that pin goes right in there, gives it a pivot point. So you, when you adjust them, it, it doesn't go all over the place. So make sure that you get it in that little hole there. Okay, so I've got the points in there. They're not adjusted. They're not even opening when I twist it. I've got the condenser. So basically I've got to hook these two pieces up onto this brass connection here. Um, so I got to go grab a wrench for that. Okay, so I uh, found the right wrench. Now I'm just going to put this back together. You got to be gentle with this little strap little copper strap because if you break it I'm not really sure you can find one that easily maybe okay so I've got that in there, condenser, the points. Now let's just set the points. Uh, it calls for 025, and I'm just going to bring the camera in closer. Maybe you can see how it's done. Okay, so if you can see this little block right 
right here. When the engine is spinning, every time it gets to one of these lobes right here, it lifts this up. So what we need to do is we need to set the distance. When, when this opens here, So when this is in its fully, as far out as it will go, push on that block, we need the points to be at this 025 setting. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put those there. Sorry, you probably can't see that. Okay, so now maybe you can see every time that comes around, it opens these little points right here. See them open? Open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. So, so when they're open, they are the thickness of this part of the feeler gauge. 025 is what it calls for. So that's how you set the points. You want to make sure they're in the open position and that this piece, the feeler gauge can slide in and out. It's actually a little, a little tight right now. I'm going to loosen it a little more, but it's hard to do while you're on camera trying to show it. So I think you get the gist of it. Once you have it set, you just um, tighten it down and then uh, put, it comes with a little bit of grease, a little bit of lubricant uh, for the points. And basically you put that around the shaft here so that this block doesn't wear out too quickly. All right, I'm gonna reset it real quick to where it's perfect. Okay, so I've got the points set the way I want them, where I'm happy with them. And I'm just gonna put some of this lube around this, uh, it's, it's basically a camshaft. So I'm just gonna put some on there so that it'll lube that thing for a while. just kind of keep it so it doesn't eat away at that little block because once that block wears out your points will change the setting will change and uh, and then it probably won't run won't open the, and close the points all right so that's that's pretty much it um, I don't know why I don't have a distributor cap um, when I went and uh, picked all this stuff up I can't imagine that I didn't buy one so I'm uh, I'm wondering if they said it was uh, gonna be in in the morning and then I just forgot to go pick it up so I'll have to check my receipt but anyways um, putting the cap on is just the basic you put the cap on and snap these two up and you're ready to go so anyways um, don't forget to put some oil down inside here. Um, I mean, you probably can't put too much. If it's coming out overflowing, that's probably okay. Uh, and then put it back in the tractor and should be on your way. So I'm hoping this will fix my problem because I'm really tired of messing with it. And uh, I'll let you know in another video when I, uh, when I get up there and I put it back in and see if it starts right up or if I still have issues. So. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching Hillbilly Repairman. Um, if you get a chance, go over to uh, hillbillyflannel.com and check them out, and uh, we'll see you next time.